Good morning and welcome to your Farm at Home show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Jason Phillips. He's a Simpson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Right, yeah, around this time of year, you know, we start thinking about, we start thinking about our first frost and we start thinking about what are some things that are associated with that and prussic acid would certainly be something that should come to mind for our livestock producers. And it can be problematic really quick, so we need to be attentive to which grasses those are that we need to think about. So, um, you know, looking at some of, our, some of our summer annuals, we're looking at sorghum sedan grass, sedan grass, sedan grass, sorghum sedan grass hybrids, but then probably what most people would encounter and what most people should be concerned with is Johnson grass, mm -hmm. which we have growing wild in our in in almost every pasture or or a lot of our pastures. So we really need to be paying attention to the weather, right? This time of year. Yeah, we do. Um, you know, and we need to make a plan. We need to think about. Okay, we know which pastures have a lot of uh, a lot of Johnson grass, so we may need to utilize some sort of temporary fencing strategy in order to keep those animals away from that, away from that Johnson grass, because after a frost, it's toxic during the wilting stage. Mm -hmm. So as that, as that Johnson grass, or any of the others that I mentioned, when it's in that wilting stage, that's when it's toxic. And what we have to do as producers is allow that to completely dry down. And what happens is the mixing of those enzymes, when those cells rupture during a frost and those enzymes mix together, it creates prussic acid. Mm -hmm. But eventually that will convert to cyanide gas and dissipate into the atmosphere. And so, what, and that's when that plant is dried down. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do as producers to be sure that we're on the safe side is we need to allow that to completely dry down. And now, after a non-killing frost, we recommend as a university to, to leave those animals off of, that, off of that pasture for two weeks. And some producers might say, that's a long time, you know, or the other one is, we have another non-killing frost in mm -hmm. the meantime while we're waiting that two weeks. Oh yeah. Do we still wait the two weeks? Um, you know, the, the biggest factor is it needs to be completely dried down. Most times, whenever we have our first non-killing frost, typically within that two-week period, we have a killing frost, which is 28 degrees for two hours or more. This is just a, a roundabout figure, but mm -hmm. about 28 degrees for two hours or more. And then, typically, that Johnson grass is going to dry down within about 72 hours. So, actually, after a killing frost, you know, it dries down much more quickly and we can put the animals back out there. Or after a non-killing frost, we need to wait, we need to pull those animals off for two weeks, but really to be on the safe side, I like to say, at that point in time, wait until a killing, a killing frost occurs. And then you know that that Johnson grass is not, is not toxic. Um, but we do have the ability, of course, I mean, I would encourage folks to call and ask, but we also do have some test strips and we have the ability to check and see if prussic acid is, is present. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's always a good rule of thumb to follow these guidelines. And you know, I think it doesn't take a whole lot for it to cause severe problems with your animals. It does not. And you know, also something that people might do if they really need access to that pasture is don't put all your animals out there, you know, maybe just a couple at first as, you know, to test it out to make sure it's good. But, but if you follow these guidelines, typically we're going to be okay. The main thing is, is when you walk out there, that Johnson grass should look brown, it should look dried up, and it should look dead. And, and when it gets to that point, the, the uh, prussic acid has dissipated. So we just really want to be on the safe side because if our animals get exposed to prussic acid, it can be very detrimental and it can kill them with very quickly. Yeah, and so that's why it's so important this time of the year to watch temperatures if you have a temperature reader, because sometimes on different farms, your farm and my farm might get to be different temperatures. And well, we can see a lot of variation from county to county, um, from smaller areas within that county, and then different elevations. You know, uh, if you get down around a creek bottom, for instance, it can be four or five degrees cooler than up on a hill. Mm -hmm. 
so even on the same farm, we can see quite a bit of variation. Absolutely. So keep that in mind. And if you have any questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.